Hi Office Work Champions, welcome to the July edition of the Office Work Insider. So let's get right into it. Martin, what news have you got for us? Hi Chris, as usual I've picked three topics uh, that I'd like to show, uh, one in Word and two for the mail signatures, so let's dive right in. In Word we had a feature for a while already now that's called the personal uh, or, or profiles where you can set up a profile that uh, will fill in a few fields of the wizard in the way that you use them a lot. I have set up one for my boss, so if I click here on my boss, uh, then you'll see I move over as a signature person too. Uh, the boss is on signature person one on the left hand side. And actually the display of the signatures now shows the scanned signatures which have been prepared. So the, those have, are settings that have been changed here. If I now want to switch back to myself, I can go to me and you'll notice that, oh, uh, it didn't clear out this this signature person too. It only set me and it set the displaying of signatures to not show signature uh, images, but it didn't remove myself from the signature person too. And that's exactly the feature we implemented. So if I go and edit the profiles and I go to me, I can now uh, choose that the signature person too shall not be not touched. I can say it should actively be removed, you know, left empty. That's why we have this checkbox here. And once you click this checkbox, you cannot enter a value here, obviously, because you're saying, clear it out, you know, make sure it's empty. Mm -hmm. And if I have set that, and I now choose my profile, me, you will see that it's going to remove the signature person too. And with this feature, you can now create profiles that fill in a few things, clear out a few things, and you're totally free of uh, how to use this feature and what that should result in. So you could have a profile that just adds a certain subject and a type. If you use that a lot, you can have a profile as the one I did now for myself with me and my boss to manage the signature block um, as you wish. It's, it's uh, super flexible this way. And uh, I think that's the, the biggest feedback we've heard from the market so far from that feature, uh, from, that, from the profile feature. And introducing this leave empty checkbox, uh, I think we covered like 99% of all wishes people uh, have, have come forward to or have announced towards us in the, in the, in the past. I guess the most use case, because usually the, the main point of the profiles is that you have you know, you can have a profile for yourself, but also for yourself in different departments if you're, you know, with a marketing, with an administration and stuff. And then sometimes you will have, like you said, two signatures or certain subjects and then others not. So then technically you can create different, 10 different profiles, create the ones you don't like, and then you can switch between them very quickly and you never actually have to adjust anything within those settings, right? You can go straight into writing the content. I guess that's the end point really that you don't have to the first point was, I guess, to select the profiles was that you don't always have to select the ones that you like. And now you can also select the ones and gray out the other ones. So you always have access, actually the perfect profile in the end. Absolutely. And if there's one that you like a lot or use a lot, you have this one with a little heart here. So that's the one you can set as default. Uh, just by going here and saying uh, set as default, then that profile will be uh, applied on every new document. And combining that with, with uh, you know, having profiles that only remove certain things or add certain things, I think the users has, has full flexibility in, 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 in filling out all of these fields in the fastest possible way, just by selecting a few profiles down here. Awesome. Cool. Then I'll switch to the next topic. Let me get this out of the way. And uh, the next topic is in the mail signature area. And there we have implemented something we've already had for the wizard for quite a while, which is uh, support of custom extension properties. So custom extension properties is something organizations um, need when the predefined set of properties that you can use for employees like office language phone number and so on if there's anything missing there uh, they can uh, extend those user properties and we can now link them so in this sample i'm going to link uh, one of these properties and we call it initials so we we're, we're able to add an initial uh, for each employee, we may, we may want to have this initial visible in an email signature and therefore we just connect that and I'm going to call it initials. Okay. And once I've done that, 
I will then have that property available in my mail signature editor. I can go to user and then I can see the initials uh, appear as an additional new property. And this little info button or icon shows me what it's actually linking to. And if I insert it, it does insert this cryptic thing, but that's why we allowed you to give it a name uh, so that you better understand what you are looking at. It's not appearing here because in our tenant we don't have data in that initials property, um, but that's basically how it would work. And if I had initials, it would just be something like this. Mm -hmm. What's the benefit of using like a link property like that compared to a normal one that you can create in a different way? Like this will always take well, the most just... up-to-date information? It's just that this list of properties is fixed in stone by Microsoft. This is just the, the, the set that mm. is available. And um, some companies may have, you know, additional IDs, additional numbers, additional attributes they, they uh, want to store to an employee or with an employee and then make that even visible in Word or in, in an email signature. And that's why we've created this, uh, this ability to also link to those properties. Okay, so it pretty much gives you, it opens up the freedom from what is given by Microsoft to anything you yep. really want to do. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, that's a great segue into the second feature where um, in the past we offered the option of showing properties of the signed in user in your email signature. And that absolutely works if the person that sends the mail is also the person that is uh, um, signed into Outlook and every time you do something for yourself that would be the case. But there are companies which use shared mailboxes where they say, oh, we have a mailbox like sales at, at contoso.com, for instance. And then if a user uh, sends an email from that mailbox, they may also want to show the email address of that mailbox and the username of that mailbox. In the past, you couldn't do that, but now you can. Now we also have all the properties for a user available under the mailbox. And I've prepared a little snippet to kind of illustrate that. Let me just copy this in. So here we are. And um, in this um, little example, I'm displaying the signed in username is me and the mailbox uh, display name is also me. But let me now switch or simulate the switch when I'm using a shared uh, mailbox. So I can go over here and say the mailbox I'm using to actually send this would be sales. And I now see down here that the display name that the mailbox attribute returns is the sales team. That's actually the one I want because I'm sending it from the sales team mailbox. So my current email signature up here should not show the signed in user, which is me. It should show the user of the mailbox I'm using to send this. So therefore, I'm going to now swap this out. I'm going to take this mailbox display name and swap this out in my signature. Now I can remove this down here again. And there I am. So I can now... Um, Simulate sending this from my personal mailbox. Gives me my name sending this from the sales mailbox. Gives me the sales team information. And of course, over here, I don't need to, you know, uh, do this via the snippet. I have all of the properties available with this drop down here and I can use the display name uh, here. And that will uh, provide me with the same that I just put up here. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm imagining that most customers that use shared mailboxes would go and replace their existing user-based attributes to mailbox-based attributes uh, if they want to show the mailbox attributes in the signature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I guess the benefit is that it doesn't matter if it's an individual user, like you said, or an entire department. Uh, it will always adjust it to whoever is using it and if you're using the share mailbox then it will be the one sales at Contoso for example or if it's your personal one then it will show your personal name so the benefit yeah. is there to use that in most large organizations and also medium ones it's only small ones that maybe don't have specific small departments in that sense I probably wouldn't use the individual user one I think for most yeah. customers it will probably be 
definitely that one. So, so basically, this allows you to have an email signature not based on the user that signed into Outlook, but on the sender details who is sending the email. That's the that's the big difference. And uh, yeah, it, it's we've we've been hearing this for a while, and uh, we're happy that we were able to implement this. So. Uh, we, we, we hope a lot of customers and uh, new customers will obviously start with that and existing customers may want to switch if they have this need. Now I'd also quickly, some of you might notice that uh, we've left out an insider episode that's mainly due because of travel. Um, I've been at uh, Microsoft Build in, in Seattle and been talking to many uh, teams again. Uh, first time since a while based on COVID no, there was not much traffic uh, traveling going on but now they're kind of back and using an event like uh, build where a lot of engineers fly in uh, was a great way to catch up and to um, kind of align the roadmap again and ho hopefully also help them build the right pieces so that we can uh, come up with cool solutions for customers AI was of course a topic. Uh, we have intensified our uh, engagement there. Nothing I can talk about right now. Anything that would come from our side will take a little while because there still need to, some work still needs to be done on the platform level on the Microsoft side and they have like uh, release cycles of a half a year or so. But uh, the important thing is we are intensi uh, we intensified our talks there and uh, we are really um, eager in in being able to ship something sometime um, that will greatly benefit customers over the next few months and years. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Martin. And see you Good. in the next one.